There is no way that any of us, in, in any of the wisdom that is available, is going to change the way in which the world is moving. There is nothing going to change that. It is something to understand about the nature of the financial institutions that are the bedrock of the world that we live in, that these financial institutions are something that were built in a time and a background frequency of the cross of planning. Everything about the institutions that we have, everything about the way in which our lives operate has been supported by something that's disappearing. It's disappearing. The material plane since 1615 has been about cooperation and the bargain. It has been about cooperation and the bargain. And it is out of the way in which we have been organized through the cross of planning that the institutions, the educational institutions, the things that trained us, that developed our skills, that got us to work together in factories, that got us to work together in larger and larger and larger units to support larger and larger populations, all of this has been supported by a background frequency that is going away. And it's going to change the very nature of the way in which the material plane operates. Since 1615, as long as we have been in this round, everything about the material plane has been based on a bargain. And a bargain that inherently is a bargain between winners and losers. And it has been the way. And it is a bargain that once enforced, that bargain brings all of those who suffer the most at the material plane to be of service to those who have gained on the material plane. The reality is that when we look at the world around us, everything about the way in which we function, the very credit cards you have, the bills that you carry in your pocket, all of these, all of these are made possible not by our ingenuity, but by the background frequency that makes this possible. That it makes it possible that we trust each other in these odd arrangements that have been construed in this era. Everything about getting a job, everything about working, is built on a long chain of rules, loyalty, agreements, and, bar and bargains. The bargains between those that employ, those that are employed. The bargains that exist between businesses and suppliers. All of the fundamental bargains that we assume are natural, are not. See, something that Dream Rave shows us. And every night when you go to sleep, you descend into a five-centered vehicle and you are reduced to an ancient persona, often a deeply savage one, one that ex has existed forever on a very lower plane. It is something to understand about us. We are never very far away from the mammal underneath. We are never far away from the beast. Human beings do not particularly get along well. They don't. They have to be trained from the earliest age to get along. They do. They have to be trained to get along in institutions in which there are people that they hate you know, the bullies, the this, the that, all of the things that go along with it, they are trained. And if you don't follow the rules, then you are dealt with, you are punished, you are made to see the way. See, everything about what it is to exist on this plane is to understand that everything that we take for granted is not something that is based inherently on our capacity, but it's based on the way in which we are moved, and the way in which we are moved by a huge frame, a huge cycle. We have not always lived materially this way. All of these bargains, all of these relationships, I want you to think about how many bargains have to be kept to give people breakfast in Shanghai or New York City. I want you to think about how many agreements are built into that. How much trust has to be built into that. It is through every single layer that we do. We trust that the virtual thing that you do is actually 
taking money from you and putting money over there and that somebody is actually going to do that. That you go to that little funny machine and you stick in a card and there's going to be something that's going to jump out at you. You take it all for granted. You do. In the same way that you take for granted the thousands of things that you deal with in your life that you have no idea how they work. You don't. We live in an age of incredible blind trust. How many of you could feed yourself? I mean, really? Have you ever thought about what happens when you wake up in the morning and there's no supermarket? We take it all for granted and we assume that it's not going to go away. We assume that all these inherent bargains are going to stay. We assume that the career that we're going to study for today is actually going to exist tomorrow. The world is changing. When this knowledge came into the world, it didn't come into a world that was going to be a world of trust. Not a world based on the cross of planning. A world that's changing. You see, all the knowledge that has come before is knowledge that brings human beings together socially and brings them together in a way that they will cooperate with each other and not kill each other. All of this conditioning, all of this homogenizing, human design isn't about us. It's about I. It's about me. It's about you. You see, there is no material direction for you other than what is absolutely correct for you. And it isn't about the way in which the homogenized world deals with material. Because the homogenized world says that, you know, you've got to have this or you have to have that because it all gets caught in that measurement. <coughs> but you see, one of the most profound things to understand about being yourself is that you get precisely what you need. It isn't always what you think. But you get precisely what you need. See, my deepest concern is the concern for survival that is survival in a way in which we no longer have to put all of our time and all of our energy into trying to figure out how to work it out on the material plane. Because that's what we're doing. That's what humanity is doing. They're all desperately trying to figure out how do I survive on this material plane? And all the things that they are willing to do for that And at the bottom of it is fear. See, money and fear are really the same thing. The money game is all about fear. The fear of not having. That fear of wanting. Those fears that are so powerful that they totally distort the way in which you work. But I'd be happy to stay with you a little bit and enjoy some of the camaraderie of not only um, honoring this time, space, and place to commune about what is to come, because that was a pretty heavy thing, you know, S hearing that, what surprised you most? For me, you know, money and fear being the same thing. Wow. Money being, I know that it's a mutation, according to what Ra said. It's a mutation that operates out of the 14th gate. That happens to be my unconscious sun, as well as my Mars. So. Mars brings mutation in somebody's chart. So I've got a repeating pattern of money mutation. Anybody else in here doing crypto? Yeah, I saw somebody was asking about, um, is this course gonna talk about the money changing, you know, the financial engagements? That's not my expertise as far as how the world is working in this current day and age. I just know that I happen to be one of those people that got into crypto four years ago. And for me, also too, being a non-energy type, 
a lot of the value that I have had g been given in this work has to do with an exchange of energy, not just from me to another, whether it be um, people that I work with or people that are working for me, but also um, students. Sometimes when, you know, stuff happens, life happens, and I've got a pretty full practice, a business too, and oftentimes, instead of using money, we exchange value. So I know for me personally, that is something that is and has been one of the ways that I've gotten the capability of systems mastery. It does take some time in this to experiment and try it and see and study and practice. The root of mastery is the 58th gate. Happen to have that one too. And in order for us to comprehend where it's all going, how will we really know for sure? I know I don't know, but I do know that things are titanically shifting, these changing morphing times that we're in is definitely the right time to realign to what's right for you so that your own personal navigation system, your body compass, what's your personal authoritative process, whether it be an inner authority or an outer authority, as we'll explore in this coaching with your charts. You being your own authority is the quote unquote only thing, according to Ra, that's going to help you survive these rapidly changing times. And that's why I played that video for you. So um, according to Ra, in about 60 years, there may not be an internet, you know? Um, you're very welcome, my pleasure. Uh, Channel is saying, I feel like this change he speaks up is showing up in people going back to homesteading and barter. Bingo, right there. I live out, uh, not off grid, I couldn't do that completely, but solar, well, definitely um, have lots of blackouts over here. So once in a while, I, I definitely make sure that I have assistance for big classes so that they can take over if there's a, you know, a blip on the grid because the, the solar doesn't always kick in. Okay, so what else? Titanic, the shifts, yeah. Tectonic, another way of saying that, you know, Titanic shifts, <laughs> tectonic. Um, bit difficult to understand his talk. You know, I remember Perry is saying crypto is the next stage, whether we like it or not. I hear you. I know. I see it to be true, too. We were actually invited into, my husband and I, both emotional split definition projectors, invited into it because in order to get something that we wanted, the only thing that they would accept was crypto. And that's how in 2020, early, um, we became starting to use it. And I actually heard about it in 2017, but didn't know what to do back then. Okay, it felt so true. Yeah. Um, to address Barbara, you're saying difficult to understand his talk. You know, I remember listening to as much raw as I possibly could get my hands on in the beginning, and I knew I couldn't understand really what he was saying, but the frequency behind the words that he was using was something that I knew I was attracted to and I could attune to. So that's my most important success tip when it comes to what's right for you, is to feel inside of your body and sense into whether or not you're, you're, you're being nourished by the information. Manifestors are here to initiate. They impact through informing. So Ra was informing us about things that maybe at the time, and I know this is true for me, at the time I could not have the same kind of capability of these neurons firing on all cylinders like most of the time they do nowadays. Because when it comes to the deconditioning process in order to align to what's true for you, your form principle, the brain-body system coming online is something that those of us who are in the know and have deconditioned over time with this have found to be true. Your mental capability, your awareness principle, the internal I am principle, how your life's work is here to be lived through you, it shifts, it morphs. And some people, you know, their bodies change. Definitely for me, my mind changed a ton. So everybody's gonna have a different experience. And if you can sense into your body compass, you're gonna find that there are particular, specific ways that you attune to what's right for you. It may be a sensory capability. For me, it's feeling. I'm emotional and I'm feeling. And so to tap into the sound, word, vibrational frequency formulas that people are using, not just what the words 
R that they're using. With raw, you might be learning because you're brand new a whole new vocabulary and it can feel kind of overwhelming and that's why I'm here. Plus, mybodygraph.com, go, go click on the little owl up there. Again, it's a free service by Jovian Archive. Mybodygraph.com, click on the little owl. You can look up any words that you don't know yet, okay? Um, I hope that that was helpful. I, I've been fantasizing channel about going back to homesteading, but we, we got this big property, we even bought the lot next door, and doing the work of homesteading was not something that I could, I could do, so it still remains a fantasy. Okay, let's see. Isn't the collective, Robin is saying, not self, too selfish to allow such massive value structures, such as in the internet and food supply change, to simply disappear after 2027. So it's not going to happen after 2027. The massive changes that are taking place now are going to continue. And if you think about how massive the changes have been in even the last three years, everybody agree that the last three years have brought tremendous change? Imagine that, we've been sped up, right? Imagine that tenfold. Imagine that continuing to change and then what's gonna happen? Not Nobody knows for certain or for sure, but within a hundred years after all of us who were born before 2027 die out, if we will, who knows, there might be technology advances that allow us to regrow organs. I know I've talked to a doctor recently that his team is actually working on that. But who knows what kind of catastrophic events might be in store because of the new era or because of the shifting, changing times. If you look, go to jovianarchive.com and look up 2027 or RAVE, R-A-V-E, you're gonna find that humankind is going through a mutation. And it's not like it's going to be right away that everybody is going to be completely different, but the body graph structure that mutated in something like 1781, back there, when we had the new kinds of human creatures come out, projectors, hi, if you're a projector like me, we're the new kid on the block, relatively. We're going to have another mutation, we're going to have a shift, and you remember how I was talking about those small group channels or gates, there are going to be creatures, people you would say, human, but maybe people won't necessarily think of them as such because they're going to operate fully consciously in one of those small groups. Right now, you and me, we can see the evidence of what happens to us in a group. Ah, I'm different when I'm in a group. I'm different when I'm in a group, you know, like literally. I become the expression of the identification of the energy of the group. I can sell for the group, I can represent the group, I can um, contagiate or uh, contribute to the group through my individual worth, and it's realized through contributing towards basic group goals. However, it's not just me. I am so much more when I'm in a physical group, and I can see that, the aftermath, the after effects of that. But can you imagine actually being in a group where you are one thing, we can't imagine that. We are individual, sovereign, you know, here to be our own authority. And that's the thing. That's the, the door that is closing, as Ra would say, the door being closing to inner truth. That door is slamming shut, according to him, in 2027, inner truth. It's one of my mental focuses on you. What's it like for you with this chart? How can we facilitate the internal knowing, the spark of truth lit up from inside in order for you to discover what it's like to be alive? The root of mastery is also the gate of aliveness. It brings vitality. It brings joy, the joyous. And I happen to have it in my unconscious Venus. So I value this aliveness. And I love hearing and seeing that evidenced within the people that I help serve and support in this material and this information. So back to your question, Rowan, since we don't have any time, I'm here because you're still all here. You know, we're still here, I still have energy, I don't have any classes after this. I had planned this on um, a while ago at one o'clock, and it's almost noon here. I'll have willing to go to get some lunch because I skipped lunch, but um, it's so much fun to be able to converse about these things. like food supply chains and internet. I mean, who knows? Didn't we see um, challenges with our food supply recently? 
haven't you? Um, I don't know what it's like for you in your country, but here in America, the internet is horrible comparatively to some other places until Elon Musk brought in Starlink. That's the only reason I can broadcast live stream to you from here at home. I had to rent a place in town because when I bought this house out in the middle of nowhere, I thought it had internet, even though the the, the listing said it had internet. It wasn't the kind of internet, it's like dial up or something, it wasn't the kind of internet that I could um, use to do this work. Thank you, Lald. It's nice to see you, honey. It does take a while to process what Ross says. He, he speaks in such a way, um, there's this lyrical, poetical quality to his voice. You'll notice that, and I find this is true for me too, you'll notice that when a non-energy type is, and he's a, not on energy, non-sacral. <laughs> he would teach off of, he had three motors open. He would teach off of their frequency, the people, that was one of his live events in Ibiza. And when I'm in person in a group, it's a very different experience, same thing. I'm a non-energy type, so even more, you know, um, openness to being amped up or charged up by the context, the situational social context that we find ourselves in. So. When you get into the course area, you'll notice that some of these things I'm recording on my own, as in I'm not speaking to you directly. I'm speaking to you universally, you know, sometimes heretically, because that is what I'm known to do in alignment with Ra. I'm a 3-5, he was a 5-1. The universalization principle of what it is to bring you solutions, practical solutions in times of crisis, that's what fives do. So in order to process what Ra says, sometimes it takes sourcing into you, for you. And everyone's brain, body system, and minds are so different, sometimes you can be just paying attention, and you're taking in something, and then you're like, what did I just learn? But you took it in very deeply, and your mind doesn't necessarily, can't comprehend or grasp or rephrase what was said, but then you'll find, and these are true for the people who are right mind, that over time what happens is you're a well, you become so deep and other people can come and dip into your well. So even though, because my brain is like that right facing as in it's very um, passive, just taking it all in like a sponge. If you remember from earlier, I have a totally open ajna. So there's no preference nor predisposition to trying to conceptualize in a very specific way. I take things in like a sponge. And then in the re-articulation of finding what's true inside of you, if you could, my friends, this is take whatever resonated, whatever surprised you, and try to explain it to another person. Maybe you have a friend um, in human design as well that you want to geek out over this when you watch back through the recording, when you do your worksheet, you want to discuss it with each other. That's one of the reasons why I like facilitating these groups is so that you can come together and have somebody to talk to or write about this kind of experience inside of the facilitated program. Because we who are on this kind of fringe, it's getting very popular as compared to before, but it's still not a household name. So when it comes to talking like authentically, honesty, honestly, with integrity about what's really happening to you without having to worry about what they're going to think of me because, you know, you can't necessarily do that with your friends and family yet unless they're too interested in what's different or new about you. I had one, a, a student who wrote to me recently who was very um, sad about not being able to have the kind of um, educational process that she wanted for herself because her husband was like, uh, finding research on the internet that he was just in disbelief and didn't believe. It's very common for the woman to come into the practice and the man is not into it. My husband actually came into human design before I did, but he was like, nah, I'm a manifester. I don't know about this stuff, you know, and I got all excited about it and I brought it to him and he's like, no, 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 no. But by that time he had said, you know, if there's ever a place where I have strong resistance, I'll soften and I'll look at it. And so he looked at it with me. And he also saw how my deep, intense, penetrating focus and awareness shifted and changed and morphed. My voice changed. If you look at old videos, the voice changes. The frequency changes. Your chemistry 
sometimes changes. When it comes to aligning to the truth of what is right inside of you to own, you know, to come to grips with, to find comfort in the consistency and the authenticity of how you are here and who you came here to be. So do I believe? I don't believe anything, unfortunately. It's just not my process. I do know. You're, you're saying, Thomas, um, do you believe crypto will be effective after 2027? I know personally that I use crypto, that it is incredibly efficient. Um, XLM is one of those cryptos that I have used for years to pay people. It's very fast. It's so much faster and more efficient than sending moneygrams or even bank. I mean, it's instant. And the fees are very small comparatively to having to send, you know, heaven forbid, have you ever sent money in the mail? That's how old I am. <laughs> have you ever gotten money in the mail? That's how old I am. You know, that just, not safe. <laughs> When it comes to effective, I do not know how the entirety of the scope of the business world is going to change with the use of crypto. But they're talking about, you know, world coins and all those, um, why would we need cash except for, you know, exchanging in person and look at what happened when we went through that COVID-19, but yeah, the lockdowns. When we went through the lockdowns, how they didn't want us using cash, so we all went to card, very easy. So what's the difference about a card that you can use for money versus a card that you can use for crypto? That's how it works now. You get a card, I, and you just use it for, for, for exchange, you know, swipe. Um, there are gonna be needing to have some laws change in order for that to be effective. And this is not a crypto conversation nor course, so I'm not an expert by any means. But I, that's probably about all I know. Um, his use of the word bargain fascinated me. I'm curious if you have uh, the cross of planning, Emily, because you're asking. And, you know, bargain, that's what it is. It's the end of the era of bargains. Cross of planning either in your own natal design or in your life cycles. Because um, you're looking forward to exploring that in your energy healing work. I was an energy healer for a while, too. I started out... Um, many different jobs, threes do that, many different jobs over the years. And um, after being a massage therapist for years, did studied energy, energy healing. Okay, Erica is contributing, Rowan, I think the background frequency and the resistance people will meet as the shift continues to happen will make it difficult for those structures to maintain themselves. They will just disintegrate as people change. Right, so if we, um, don't have the capability of fast cryptocurrency because for whatever reason, you know, um, the inability for us to get electricity or resources or power or whatever it happens to be, internet, um, things disintegrating as people change. We have as a society, as a species, gone through rise and fall, rising and falling of civilizations continually. You know, it is part of the cyclical nature of what it is to be. So what will happen after 2027? That's where um, Raw has a lot of material. If you go to jovianarchive.com, there is a 2027 semester, a whole semester, where he goes into the details of, and there's also other videos. I, I can't remember them at the, at the top of my head. I'm just enjoying the ability to commune with new people. I'm a three. Three is like new and improved and new people too. Hi, who are you? What's your thought process, you know? As long as I have energy for it. I'm starting to feel um, lights, hot. This one is cold thirst. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily like being under light, uh, hot, bright lights for very long. So I think I just wanted to get through the chat before I let you go. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's happening more gradually, but the more awake and aligned you are, the easier it will be, yes. For sure, massive change. Thank you, Erica, I agree. Um, Channel is saying, my friends and I are looking into it. I have generators in my world that are constantly inviting me into small communities with them to homestead. I'm the one with the knowledge to actually live that way. My husband and I had that same fantasy of, gosh, we wish we could have some kind of, you know, place where we could all support each other, you know, back in the day. Now we're, we're in that separation phase of just, you know, just the two of us, my daughter moved out. It's just the two of us now, although we do have five animals. We've got three dogs and two cats. So that's quite a, a handful to manage still. 
but yeah, that is one of those those things that can be so helpful. Michael is saying, Erica, yes, I agree. I've spent 30 years helping people start up as self-employed and to grow businesses and social enterprises. I'm seeing a shift from hyper-local, or sh shift to hyper-local communities, exactly, and community self-help approaches in business. So the earlier comment about homesteads feels the case. Mm, excellent. I agree. You know, um, it's like this massive meltdown and shift in orientation from the, there's a, a lot of us that are uh, done with living in the, the big city and moving out to the country. Now, interestingly, if you go to mybodygraph.com and you look at, there's a relatively new advanced analysis, you're gonna find that there's definitely, definitely different places in space. It's the context of where you find yourself that is a place of less resistance. So my husband and I, and we didn't plan this, <laughs> we are both mountain people. And we've always find, found that we love to be up on the high ground and have these wide open spaces out in the country, rural. You know, I grew up in a very, very rural Hawaii, very rural area, um, the big island, where there isn't, there wasn't even any stoplights when I was a kid. So, and we had to drive two hours across the island to go get uh, clothes and um, any like large bulk shopping because there wasn't really wasn't anything where I was. So it's definitely a very different, you know, you, you all, everyone has their own phase of life experience to enjoy. And at different cycles or phases of life, you might find, particularly at 30, that something pulls you. And that's a little bit after that was when my now husband invited me up into the mountains of Northern California in order to find this experience of finding what is right in the alignment. So mountains, you know, it's a very interesting thing to see. Okay, so it seems to be the way of the future. Erica is saying personal empowerment with the awareness of others, hyper-local and decentralized. I'm excited to see what happens, though it is a bit scary with the uncertainty. I agree, Erica. My Uranus opposition, which happened for me at 44, I'm now about to turn 48, that one is the left angle cross of uncertainty. So this uncertainty that I feel and see, it's not only all around me, it's inside too. So how do we live with the uncertainty of not knowing what's to come? The mind wants to try and identify and have guarantees. And you know, if you're undefined splenic like me, you might want to hold on to things that make you feel safe. You know, Maybe uh, a job that is bringing you in a certain kind of level in income is something that you're having a hard time letting go of because you don't want to lose that solid income. And yet, the new era is about self-empowerment. So you see a lot of people, and they're talking about the gig economy, you know, the creator economy, um, most people going off and doing their own thing. People, companies are having a hard time being able to recruit and keep talent because the talent, it's so easy to start a business nowadays, the talent can go off and make tons more, potentially, than super slaving to build up somebody else's company. So my sense of it is that you're going to see a lot more partnerships, more people who are independent contractors or partnerships when it comes to the engagement of serving and supporting however it is that you are here to do your work in the world. I'm a contagion. so. When I was hired at Jovian Archive in 2014, being a contagion was an advantage for me, especially with that 1-8, as I talked about in the presentation. We are people who can represent and sell people on a direction or the um, stand as an example um, of what the company, the model, demonstrating the model of what the um, product or service or offering can do for you. And so I tend to be one of those people that is very sharing, I'm a sharing person too, um, sharing about my journey and experience in human design because it has changed me dramatically relative to who I was before it came into my life and who I am now and what I have and what my life is like. It's not like it's always easy. There definitely is still, there's bumps and bruises, you know, life still happens. But to be able to 
be attracted to those of like frequency. It is one of the things in our divinity, our divine differentiation that we came here to be, that we are going to attune and be attracted to those of like frequency. Because the like frequency, you know, there's, there's mm, more chemistry, like literally chemistry, within the relational dynamics. There's more honesty and integrity. There's more trust. One of the new era keynotes is knowing, learning what can be trusted. And there may be some distrust there. But can we separate from the hypocrites and be able to walk the talk and stand firmly on our path of being our own authority? This is the thing that I really want each of you to be able to get over the time as you align and decondition in order to find what's true inside of you. This is the thing that you can do, each of you. Each of you can come to know that place and space inside or that process, if it's an outer authority process, that you can trust in order to feel what's right for you. Smell, maybe. I say feel a lot because I'm feeling cognition and I'm emotional. But sense, you know, whatever you're sensing, knowing, you know, grokking, realizing, whatever it is, self-realization, self-actualization. That's what this human design system is here for. So it's not about the amount of money that you're going to be making. It's about living your life in service to your own sovereign, higher purpose, your calling, your giftedness, your talentedness, whatever it happens to be. For some designs, they have no clue. And it's not, it's like your fault, you're not dumb. It's just a lot of it may be unconscious and you're not um, facilitated to be your own authority because of being compressed or repressed, not being aligned. Let me just check, I saw my phone. Um, okay, ah, okay. Yeah, thanks for letting me know, Loki. So. When it comes to the uncertainty, anyway, I just wanted to say I know what you're, what you're feeling is, is I got an inkling. And I know where you're coming from. It's challenging to let go of your mind wanting to scheme and manipulate and plan and strategize. Some of us are strategic, but that strategic nature is always going to be for an other. The mental strategies are not here to make decisions from, ever. Your mind is never your inner authority. My mind is a beautiful outer authority for you. For me, it sucks. But for you, it's beautiful when it's aligned in right timing. So it goes back to frequency. Perry is saying, there will be things invented in the media future that we can't even imagine now. Energy machines, AI, robotics, cyborgs, personal community transformation, transportation, and sadly, tyranny, weather, pandemic. Oh, another pandemic, weather events, etc. Yeah, I hear you, Perry. However, Ra's um, predictions, and of course, you know, you are your own authority. It's not like you have to believe anything. He would say, one of the common things, phrases he would say is, don't believe me, try it and see. You know, he didn't want to be exalted as some kind of guru. He didn't. And this is about making it so everyone is honored and respected for their own authoritative process. Everyone is designed to see things radically differently. But he was given this knowledge for end times. And when it comes to this 2027 era, yes, we are still in this place of expansion. We are still on the first line, as in all the detail, all the work, that all the advantages and everything. However, one of his um, identifications with what's to come is that things would be stopping as far as evolving. On this particular planet, we've got about 1,200 years or so until it's the end for this round, for this planet, for this human form. And now you can think about that and say, what do you mean? A thousand years, that's it? You know, like, I thought we were live forever. Well, nothing goes on forever. We morph and shift and change. And the time of humans on this planet is coming to an end. That body graph is called the rave body graph. The coming of the raves is what's to come. And for a while, there are going to be humans and raves living side by side, but actually operating on different, um, not frequency, is it frequency that I want to use? The energetic availability of attunement. So when it comes to a different dimension. They're going to have a different dimensionality than we. And okay? we who are here in this form, not a lot of people are incredibly psychic to where the point where they ne never need to speak. 
these beings are not going to have to speak. They're going to be within their own construct, the three to five. <laughs> that is my cat. <laughs> okay. The three to five beings, when they're locked into their small group, there'll be one thing, and they won't need words. They'll be non-articulate. They won't need words to commune, and we have no idea what capability these creatures are going to have. Now, it's not going to be immediately or right away, but I highly recommend if you are somebody who is of childbearing age and you want children, or if you're a grandparent and your children are of childbearing age and you want children, I highly recommend that you look into this work. It's the 2027 semester on Jovian Archive. Okay. Um, you're very welcome, Erica. Okay, Pluto in Aquarius, first time in 250 odd years, right? It's because I've had enough experience repeating it and articulating. Um, suggests we'll still have conflict, but more sustainability will likely be the case. Greener business, yeah. Remember, we do not always have to increase in technology in order to have advantages. We can increase in our physiology, our psychology, our attunement, our frequency, our chemistry, our Remember, technology does not have to be the physical things, electronics that you see. Your body, it's electricity. Yeah, your chemistry, your frequency. You have so much more untapped potential inside of you. If you saw what Lavina was 12 years ago, not able to articulate or finish sentences or have intelligent conversations because the brain body system was not online. This life experience that I have is radically different than what came here before, what was aligned for me before. Okay, we're on the type of cutting edge of human knowledge, just knowing we are. I agree, Perry, we are. We are so lucky. I feel so blessed, not just to be able to work with this knowledge but to be able to be engaged with people who value their own authenticity, alignment, and sovereignty too. Yeah, this ability to be free from the mental constraints of the distortions of the vast society that is locked into this homogenizational principle of thinking that life has to look like this or you're not successful, you know? frequency as far as the spirit of abundance that arises from within each of us, the chemistry, the alignment to your spirit is your signature signpost. So for me, it's success. And that success contagiates or infects everything that I experience in my life. It's not just about, you know, money. Money is digits on a screen. I've seen mass amounts of money go in and out of my bank account. And you can see and feel how the emotional frequency field when you think about, oh, what could be, or what could have been, you know, or oh, I wish I, whatever, you know, the mind. But that doesn't have to disturb the undercurrent or the underlying frequency of what you came here to be. Money is a myth. It is um, an agreement, you know, and that's changing. That agreement is changing. So. The only currency, current energy, C, like the flow, yeah, currency, that you can absolutely rely upon and trust as you move into the 2027 background frequency is you being your own authority and your own either awareness, projector, reflector. That's generally what we have is awareness, okay, type, non-energy, so we have awareness. Not to say that the energy types, manifest or generator, don't have awareness. They do. It's just that their energy dominates. And that frequency, that chemistry, that spirit of abundance arising from within, that's the thing that's going to take you places. It's going to be the thing that unlocks all of the opportunities. The, really what we're looking for, a significant portion of us, is a change in our felt sense of being embodied feeling differently in this form. And no matter how much money you have or not, no money, you can still feel good in this body. Do you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank to feel good? I can tell you that goes away the longer you decondition. Because, see, you cannot have enough money in the bank to prevent what's to come that most people are afraid of. Most people are afraid of dying painfully. Money isn't necessarily going to solve that. 
right? And everybody dies. Everybody, see, death is not something to be afraid of. It's just a doorway. It's a portal opening to the transformation to the next iteration of this energy frequency. So you don't have to be afraid is the biggest message I can tell you from experience. Because shit happens, and it's all OK. It happens. What to do? This is the third line way. This is three. <laughs> this is the third line way. The way that you're going to learn to make money is you've got to be OK with making mistakes. I got a message earlier from Loki <laughs> thanking me for something about you know, doing a good job as far as um, when I have a hard time remembering exactly what people said. But he said something to the effect of uh, that I held it together at the beginning of the webinar. Wonderful. You know, shit happens, what to do? You pick up and you move on. And if you don't ever try, then you're never going to succeed. As in, if you don't ever uh, have new experiences, you don't learn. So that's what I can teach you as a three. That's how you make money. Don't be afraid to try. What are your dreams? What is the thing that, because see, I'm doing it. I'm living my dreams. As in, I wake up every day and I'm excited about what I get to do. Unless, of course, I'm under the weather or whatever it happens to be and I'm tired. And so, yes, sometimes I soldier on and I show up live and I actually feel better after teaching, more energized after teaching, even if I'm healing something, you know? So waking up, can you imagine waking up every day and delighting in what you're doing for work? Most people look at work, 84% of people look at work and go, ugh. I have to do that, you know, frustrated or angry or bitter or disappointed. This is what I have to do for work to make money. But what if money, as in value, could be exchanged by just being you? What if you could be you in business? Wonderful. Or career or work. It doesn't have to be that you want to have a business when it comes into this. As far as what can we align you to? What's true inside of you? I wish I had so much more energy than I could um, imagine to stay here. That's the only thing I wish. I wish I could just implant you with all of this experience and all of this reverence for you being your own authority so that you could try it too and see. I can tell you from the, from the first beginnings of it, the moment you get a taste of your sweetness for projector, satisfaction for generator, peace for manifester, surprise for the reflector, there's your sign. And as you decondition and align, that becomes more of the bulk. And the resistance, the challenges, the upsets, that is less and less and less. It doesn't, it's like a flash in the pan. It doesn't go on and on for months or years at a time where you're not aligned. And that's all this m material is really doing. I do my best to articulate to you frequency word formula phrases relative to your questions and your design so that you can for yourself align because the only person that can do this work is you. Okay, so uh, is it 12 lessons? It's way more than that, honey, or whoever it happens to be. <laughs> that was a number. Um, way more than that because I'm breaking it up into pieces. Okay, so it's 11 weeks of material that I'll be sharing with you. And the um, experience is really the reason for engaging with this. You know, yes, Jacob, three months of uh, weekly and then three months of bi-monthly support, exactly. That's going to be facilitated by Naraya Fox. Have you guys seen her? Beautiful woman that she is, soul sister of mine. Perry uh, is saying, I don't know why, but I think it's funny how the worksheet doesn't have a series of blank rides lines to write on, but instead of big empty box to write, draw, picture, scribble, mind map, anything. Exactly. Yes. Because see, we're all different. Both Ra's youngest son and I looked at that and said, no, nope, no lines. <laughs> Color outside the lines. You know, you're unique. So writing, you put lines in there and now you have to be linear. <laughs> Why not do you? You know, whatever it happens to be. I'd love to hear. What is the time zone for the classes? I and personally in Arizona Mountain, Arizona Mountain Standard. It doesn't change, okay? So once you register, you're gonna go in and based on your computer and moving it over to your own calendar, you're, it's gonna translate into your time zone, whichever it happens to be. So if you accidentally register for one in the afternoon and it doesn't work for you, just un-RSVP and do the other one, okay? It's only so that I have 
um, all time zones, because I have students from all over the world, all time zones covered to the best of my limited energy availability. I'm, I'm usually better in the morning. Uh, the ebook was designed by an artist, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what will happen to borders? Well, what's happening to borders? Have you seen? This is a world without borders when it comes to the cryptocurrency now. So that money, you know, energy, exchange, value. The mind is so linear, it, it can usually not imagine the magnificence of the abundance, which is strictly a question of spirit, that can potentially come into one's life if only one would let go of the mind running the show, as in it saying that it has to look like this. Because, see, memory and remembrances, it's built on what you've experienced. But what Ra teaches in human design is that there is only now. And the now informs the past, which affects the future. And you have here and now, which informs the past, which affects the future. So some of us are emotional, 50% of the population like me is, and we take into our intelligent appraisal of what is right for us through snapshots over time. It may seem linear, but is your memory linear? Heck no, it's all over the map, right? Lavina, sometimes the way that I teach, talk, I am all over the map because there is no consistency within the mental construct as far as the linearity of being able to articulate to you what I know to be true. I'm just basically all those channels in your design channeling, you know, I'm channeling energy as in recognition of feelings. That's one of the channels. The other one is inspiration. So that's my, my constant friend, companion, familiar, capability, talent, whatever you want to call it, it's the energy that lives inside that aligns to what is true. So when I get off on a, you know, whatever it is, the energy just flows and then at some point it stops and I go, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know, and that's why this is going on and on. There's still a bunch of you here. But I feel like we might be, oh, thank you for the 2027 semester, Jacob, that's brilliant. See, okay, here's a great example. Lavina non-energy type as in um, of a projector with a non-defined sacral. Now my sacral center absolutely has gate activations in it. Part of my life's work is there. But what happens is not knowing when enough is enough. In the past I used to have this burning sensation over my lower uh, back that would tell me okay I'm done. But that was too late. I would end when I was exhausted rather than oh when the energy is no longer sweet, as in it doesn't feel right to be here, then I'll be done. And that's usually how I run things. Um, you tried bartering in the 80s until the government got involved. That's insane, Susan. I didn't know that. You're welcome, Elizabeth. This, this course is not included in Raw TV, the 2027 semester. It's audio. Any videos, though, are. Time zone for the classes. Yeah, mountain standard time everybody. What do you say about people who are designed to be in urban areas? How might they have survived through the changes? Well, that they're perfectly designed for that, you know, capability. As an example, urban areas, there's more of a condensed density to the auric frequency. So they're going to want to have that connective field. My husband and I, just seeing the, the, the neighbors that close and hearing them, it's a little bit too close, you know? So it's a very different thing. You're, you're built for it. Like you're built for the density of um, if you're a shores person and you like being um, down low, maybe you're on a beach somewhere. You're getting a different feed of energy, a different um, density of even oxygen levels. You know, so everybody has their own, so many different ways that people can be designed, their own process. This is enough. This is about um, my max. So I'll let you go. Two hours. I'm going to stay on just to read, and I'll stop talking and end the recording. But I'm going to stay on to read so I don't miss any um, chats, because I love, I did that once. I did this webinar for a really big, like, 800-person webinar, and I thought I would be able to read the chats later, and I closed it, and I never got to see anything of what those wonderful people that I introduced human design to, so I don't want to miss out on that. Um, thank you, channel. Softening, yeah. There's not the same pushiness. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, exactly. Bernie is saying, 
I keep noticing. I can tell anyone else what to do easily, but not me, defined head ashram. Mm -hmm. Yes. N they probably won't send the whole discussion piece. Just the little, you know, this is bonus. Some of my earlier courses with projectors, we'd stay on for four, three and four hours talking, geeking out about human design. Um, Pluto orbit is 226 to 249 years. So yes, think back to the American Declaration. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with me. Is that the reason why all external frequencies are getting more and more to disturb our, oh, electronics, text? I don't know. I'm not sure when you asked that question, but I know I'm a feeling cognition. So if you look down at your body graph, you see the upper um, left arrow pointing right. All of us have more sensitivity, but particularly feeling cognition, very sensitive to electromagnetics. So yeah, I, I have my feet on a grounding mat right now. All the electronics around me, I, I definitely need to take breaks. That's why I can only be um, on. Usually four hours is my max, two different classes per day, four hours. Um, you're not exactly sure. Yeah, the cycle change, exactly. The procession, mm-hmm, okay. Just gonna catch up with the, the comments. She said about money in the bank isn't important. That's something that needs to be one of the headlines of philosophy for today. Well, yeah, Jay, whoever Jay is. I teach from experience. So in the mortgage and real estate banking crisis of 2008, my husband, former husband, second husband and I, we had a mortgage and real estate brokerage. Multiple properties had put lots and lots of money into them. And we were very well off until the mortgage crisis hit. And we lost it all. I found myself um, living in an RV with a toddler and uh, a husband that was disabled and very, very depressed in 2008, nine. And so I know from experience what it's like to be high and then to be very low. I was born in a Hawaii, I was mentioning, I was born and raised in Hawaii, and at one point in our life, no electricity, no running water. Washing our dishes in tide pools, just on the other side of a sandy dirt road where, where Captain Cook landed in Hawaii. That's where I spent some of my years, formative years, as a child. You know, um, the, the vast, amount of difference in wealth. Not only me experiencing it personally, but also what you see out there. Wealth is not the measurement of value. But this new era, the homogenized society, they're, they're leaning towards finding abundance through materialism. And yet, abundance is strictly a question of spirit. So by separating from the homogenized whatever it is that people think that they have to, must, should do. I need to be a millionaire. Millionaire is not so big deal anymore. I need to be a billionaire. Well, yeah, that's a big deal still. <laughs> but you see people out there talking about their, you know, $100 million business or making million dollars a month or whatever the case may be. And, and those videos, they get exalted. But what about the value of living a li life that's simple and plain and clean? That sources into what you know to be true inside of you that feels sweet or successful or surprising or delighting you know alive vital joyous satisfying self-satisfying for who you are for yourself generator or peaceful you can't put a price tag on that to to have clean water you know to have water from a spring oh the most delightful thing you know it doesn't take money. Uh, well, unless you live in Southern California, they have a spring there that's been put a price tag on there. I remember, I think Carlsbad, anyway. <laughs> You're hoping this Q&A is recorded. I'm pretty sure it's still going. Yes, it is. If making mistakes help with making money, then I'm a uh, one three primed to be a gazillionaire. You are really good. You'll learn that, what Ross says. I have direct quotes from Ra, but also personal experience to share. One threes are really good at failing forward. Discovered that, tried that, didn't work. Okay, try this again. You know, try this over here. Try this differently, you know. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jacob. 
I could listen to you all day. Valerie, I wish I could speak all day. It's like the most joyous thing to do is to commune with you, my seeing, my personal seeing, because it's not every day that, you know, I like to be very enclosed in my own auric bubble with my five animals and my husband used to be my daughter, she moved out, and really just pay attention to what's true inside. And what happens when you're out there in the world, I do go out, but I don't, I don't party hardy like I did when I was a kid, you know? I don't socialize in the same way because my, my energy has gotten so sensitized and so sensitive that the overwhelmment when I'm in a group particularly that hasn't invited me. It's just like, no, why am I even here? I don't really want to have that experience. And so being a projector, particularly someone like me who is an advisor mastery of a system, I am not there yet. I'm still working on my systems mastery. But when it comes to the this current era for projector, there's nothing like it because it, it can be like I'm talking to one person. I'm looking at a camera, you know, I'm focusing on you. But it can feel for you like I'm talking to you and I'm alternating, going between whatever comments are coming up. The um, live experience is not going to be the same kind of, that's why I'm delighting in it right now. It's not going to be the same way because I'm going to be going off of um, when questions come in on the form that you're going to fill out. And it's going to be about that particular week and your own chart. So it's not going to be this kind of free form, all over the place conversation. You're very welcome. Inspirational, hey, that's me, okay. Let's see. Reiki. Yeah. I love Naraya too, Virginie. She's your coach. Excellent. Lucky you. Okay. So when does the course start? Next week, Saturday, we are doing orientation and then information. The first layer of level of the type, the deeper layers of type will be for each one for each type will be on Monday. We'll be releasing it. Thank you so much, everybody. You all take care. And until we meet again, whenever it happens to be, I hope that you have and find the appreciation, value, and self-love and approval that I know inside is yours, just ripe for the taking, if you can just align to what is true. Let go of anything that's not you. Reducing resistance simply means being yourself. So in that alignment, Find that source inside of you that's true. And everything, the storm is raging outside of you when things feel very chaotic and upsetting and fearful and scared. If you can just come back into your body, whatever your tool is to get back into the body to find the safety and security and well-being of being you so that you know what is true. I hope you find that for yourself. Until next time, namaste.